the pyramid at the end of the street. I lived with my parents on a suburban street ending in a cul-de-sac. Our neighbor, Mr. Maxwell, was a widower who brought us home baked pies and helped my sister with her math homework. My high school crush, Natalia, lived in a brick bungalow three houses down. On Sundays, we all went to church, and twice a month during the summer there was a streetwide barbecue. In the winters, the kids went sledding on a nearby hill. Growing up, I considered it boring. Looking back, it was paradise. The Oboras moved in in November. From the beginning, it was obvious they were different. They didn't attend our church. They didn't make small talk by the community mailbox. Instead, they smiled and spoke about their own faith, Echnaism. Buddhist and Maya, thought is connected. Mr. Abora once told me, because the Maya crossed the Pacific and colonized Asia. Although they were never aggressive in their proselytizing, it was their one topic of conversation, and we quickly learned to avoid them altogether. However, this didn't seem to phase them, and many of us recalled their polite but ominous refrain. I'm fortunate, but you will soon see the truth. Those words echoed in my head when on a particularly dark February night, the pyramid appeared at the end of the street. It was ethereal, an effervescent volume of red mist, and one by one we came out of our houses to gaze upon its impossible appearance until every house was empty, and the street was filled with silent awe. The pyramid the pyramid pulled us towards itself, and like human ice breaking from a glacier, individually we went, freeing ourselves from the loving grips of our neighbors and families. I watched as Mr. Maxwell drifted towards the pyramid and disappeared into it. And then a short time later, pyramid took me. Despite its tangible exterior dimensions, the pyramid was infinitely vast on the inside. Its crimson redness pulsed, and space itself hummed, and from the hum emanated the voice of Mr. Abora. Welcome, welcome, Norman. Tonight you shall know enlightenment. I fell. On impact, I arose and saw before me an axe in the kneeling, crying figure of Mr. Maxwell. Don't! He sobbed. Bloody spray adorned his face. Take the axe, instructed Abora. This is your destiny. I hesitated. Mr. Maxwell cried hysterically. His hands were bloody too. Understand, Norman. Everything up to now. Everything. It has been for you. All life has been for you. My heart pumped hotly. I picked up the axe. You are the one. And somewhere deep inside, I knew he was right. I was special. Mr. Maxwell raised his eyes to look at me. I crushed his skull. His body crumpled. His blood painted my face, and I fell to my knees, tossing the axe aside. I had done it. Then... Mr. Maxwell's body disappeared. Natalia landed in front of me. Our eyes met. Take the axe, Mr. Rabora instructed her out of the hum. This is your destiny. 
Natalia, all life has been for you. Don't. I sobbed. <laughs>